And these are the richest pastors in the world, so to speak. So I'm going to be covering top 10 richest pastors that Satan blessed. Okay. Now, should I start with number one or should I just uh, go backwards? Let's go backwards and then y'all can guess who number one is, shall we? Yeah. All right then. So let's do it that way. Let's go by the top 10, all right? Let's start out with uh, number 10. Now, to be honest, actually, it's uh, more than 10, believe it or not. It is more than 10. But what we're going to do is that I'm going to select uh, these following pastors that I will put in the 10. And then I will mention some honorary mentions as well. Okay? I'm going to give some honorary mentions. But I'm going to uh, skip the ones that I actually covered before. Now, the ones that I covered before are Joel Osteen, Rick Warren, and Billy Graham. They're actually millionaires. They're actually millionaires. But I'm not going to cover them. I'm going to be covering these following names are pretty big. Let's start with number 10, Joyce Meyer. Oh, yeah. Joyce Meyer. Joyce Meyer, she makes, a, she has a net worth of $8 million. It's a she, that's right, a woman pastor. She has a net worth of $8 million, Joyce Meyer. Now, what you're going to find out with all, nearly all of these pastors, they cover two main categories. The categories they cover are non-denominational and charismatic. That's what you're going to find with these mega church pastors. The reason why they become famous and powerful is because they believe in, you know, the sowing the seed money. You ever notice pastors why most of their sermons are all about giving money? Yep. Sowing seed? Bring sowing seed? Why is that? You wouldn't become a millionaire unless you did that. Now, concerning Joyce Meyer, she actually gave these kind of quotes, which is actually pretty controversial and even blasphemous. She actually believed, uh, she actually taught that Jesus Christ, he actually went to a burning hell. That's what she taught, that, she, yeah. that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went to fry in a burning hell. And not only that, that he was actually born again. Jesus was born again through that <laughs> process. Okay. okay, quote, Jesus paid on the cross and went to hell in my place. The scene in the spirit realm went something like this. God rose up from his throne and said to demon powers tormenting the sinless son of God, let him go. Then the resurrection power of almighty God went through hell and filled Jesus. On earth his grave where they had buried him was filled with light as the power of God filled his body. He was resurrected from the dead, the first born again man. You know why he got, you know why Jesus got born again basically? Basically the translation is Jesus got born again because he got saved from hell like you and I. Like we were condemned wicked sinners on hell and we needed to get born again to get saved out of that. I mean if you want to be honest about it, if you want to be honest about it. She also said this, so they put him, that is his body, in a grave and his spirit went to hell because that is where we deserve to go. There is no hope of anyone going to heaven unless they believe this truth. Jesus went to hell for you. Huh, I wonder if there is some independent fundamental Baptist pastor who's anti-Semite and believes in post-tribulation doctrine, who believes that Jesus fried in hell, just as wicked as Joyce Meyer. What do they share in common? Birds of a feather flock together. Amen. What do they share in common? Uh, maybe they both look alike. I don't know. But anyway, the thing is, is that the thing is, is that uh, this is found at Joyce Meyer's book in her second printing, "The Most Important Decision You'll Ever Make," uh, May 1993, page 36. And then I also gave a quote from here, where it's found through uh, Joyce Meyer. And uh, you can search it through a Kindle version as well. Now, another thing, thing, <laughs> another pastor, another pastor who's considered to be one of the most wealthiest and is a problem, 
is very controversial. So we saw Joyce Meyer, and we looked at the book of Jude, right? We're going to look at the book of Jude right here. What did the Bible say concerning about these wealthy pastors right here? Hmm. In the last days, there's going to be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So we are to be aware of this. As we're heading closer to the Antichrist New World Order, One World Religion, the Bible says churches will fall into apostasy. If that's not apostasy, I don't know what is, and we didn't even get to number one yet. This is $8 million. Trust me, it gets richer than that, folks. It gets richer than that. Okay, we're going to look at uh, the book of Jude. And we're going to read verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever." Look at verse 15, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, look at this, walking after their own lust. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having, having men's persons in what? Admiration because of advantage. Look at that, because of advantage. So you notice right here, she makes $8 million. And everybody, a lot of people love Joyce Meyer. A lot of people love Joyce Meyer. And when you get to that, you're going to have to get like a red flag there and say, I wonder. All right, let's go to number nine. Number nine. Let's change colors, shall we, so that we can make this a little colorful, you know, make this a little bit more colorful. All right, number nine, Creflo Dollar. Creflo Dollar. My dad would used to joke whenever me and him would watch him preach online, give four dollar for dollar, give two dollar to dollar. That's what he would say sometimes as a joke. Anyway, that's just my dad, okay? I didn't say that, that's just my dad. So, so anyway, he makes 27 million dollars. And we're at number nine. We're at number nine. 27 million dollars. He makes three times the amount of Joyce Meyer. Now, Creflo Dollar, I mean, you know what he said one time? What he said one time concerning his jet, so he wanted to buy this private jet. You know how much? $65 million private jet for himself. So why would he need that so that he can minister to people out there? Now, if we have to invite uh, our guest preachers for the blowout, like Dr. David Walker, Pastor Mike Fernandez, and then we have to pay $65 million each for them, I think we'd go broke. <laughs> we wouldn't even have a church. We wouldn't even have a church. Why would he need that much money? But after getting all the criticism, you know what he said? This is a horrible testimony. With the, Huffing with the liberal newspaper like the Huffington Post, where they call it, the, the, where they wrote an article against him, the biggest scam of all, Dollar did not care, and he replied this way. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. I'm going to dream until Jesus comes. You see that? Wickedness. It is wickedness, this guy. And he wants a $65 million private plane. Why? So that I can minister to poor souls out there. What in the world, man? What in the world? Wickedness. Why don't you go coach, huh? Why don't you go coach? Why don't you go uh, economy? Why don't you uh, take those tickets like a lot of our preachers who came? Like missionaries who have to go to places? By the way, most of them drive to come here. What kind of wickedness 
What kind of wickedness are these people talking about? This is just pure wickedness right here. Okay, then. So let's go to the next wealthy pastor, shall we? All right, the next wealthy pastor in our list. But let's continue reading right here concerning about Jude. Verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the what? They do not have the spirit. They are sensual. Number eight, Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn. Yeah, he's only number eight, believe it or not. He's only number eight. His net worth is $42 million. Double Creflo Dollars Ministry. Benny Hinn. So I actually went to one of the Benny Hinn meetings. Uh, he had a Brownsville revival. That's a famous charismatic meeting revival. And I wanted to see firsthand why people would follow this guy and why uh, he got so many people. You know one thing I noticed? They lie to you on TV. When they show you a Benny Hinn meeting, they don't show you everything. Because when it comes to like the really crazy parts where you know this is a carnival, this is not of God the Holy Spirit, they cut that off. When I was in this Benny Hinn meeting, for example, Benny Hinn, he uh, had the same person, a lady who came up to get healed, three times she went up there. And there's like, what, thousands of us there waiting for their turn? And this one particular lady, he just has her come up three times. To be healed of what? A different ailment there, and a different ailment there, and a different ailment there. Then this large gentleman went forward, and he wanted to get healed, and Benny Hinn actually said, so uh, what do you want to get healed? And the guy's like, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. And Benny Hinn actually just put his hands in all that, and then gave him his bad breath, and the guy fell over, you know. I wanted to see how the ushers would catch him. The ushers were going... And then they dropped him on the ground like that when he fell backwards. And then the man's, the large man had a girlfriend who came up and she was kind of large herself. So then Benny Hinn said, what did you want to be healed? You want to lose weight too? And then she's like, yes, yes. And you know what the people did? They were all laughing like it was a comedy show. But the weird thing is they took this as a comedy show in all seriousness. Yeah. It is a joke, brethren. It is a joke. It's not the real thing. This is not the real thing. Okay, I went to one. They will follow the flow with how people do things because they put the nice music, the soothing mu music. That's why he likes to be bright, Benny Hinn. It awes you. It's all hypnotic. It's all that kind of stuff that's demonic to set the mood, set the stage. One time, Benny Hinn said... Didn't you know that in Egypt they have a target on my head? And you know who put the target on my head? Who wanted me out of there? Evangelical Christians. Can you believe it? Evangelical Christians. And then we wanted to see what would happen. And then we, uh, some of my friends went, oh, amen, amen, like that. And then everybody around us started clapping their hands after that. <laughs> People, I was, I was so bedazzled. I was like, my goodness. My goodness, these people are something else. They go with the flow. Another, they're all speaking in tongues. You know what I did? There's this guy going, hubba chubba, hubba chubba, hubba chubba, hubba chubba. I was like, I bet you he's going to copycat me if I'm louder than him. I was like, ay, 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 like that. You know what the guy behind me did after that? Ay, 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 ay. He, he changed his language all of a sudden. I guess that was Holy Spirit leading. See, this speaking of tongues thing, it's not, it's not Holy Spirit leading. This is a joke. This is a joke. This is a joke. Uh, the, the, the worst one was like when they were like talking about Benny and said, I want you all to hug each other and say, I love you. And then I was like, no, don't do it. And then this lady, she turned around. She looked at me. I looked at her. I was like, don't do it. And then she's like, I love you. And then she... She squeezed me tight. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then she went to my friend, and she's like, I love you. And he, he went, and then she backed off after that. 
But you see, it's a total circus. You know how long this lasted? Four hours, no bathroom break. You know why? It's to keep the mood going. It's to keep it under control. And they don't show you that on TV. See, I, I know what I'm talking about here. I actually attended one. I had to plead the blood and pray for the filling of the spirit before I went over there, man. Okay, the other one. I, I can't pronounce this man's last name right. Oyak Hilomi. Chris Oyak Hilomi. Okay, so some of you probably never heard of him, but he is very, he is very powerful now. You got to understand. Because Benny Hinn relies on him quite often, actually. Benny Hinn relies on him. They both combine to set up their own satellite TV together, you gotta understand. So this guy is actually becoming popular and more powerful than Benny Hinn. His net worth is $50 million. Wow. $50 million. By the way, here's another shocking thing. You know what he is? You gotta understand this, is that uh, from African descent pastors, a lot of them are actually millionaires. A lot of them are from Nigeria or from African descent. But I do know this is that I'm not including you the honorary mentions of a lot of African pastors who are millionaires. Millionaires, folks. And how many people are starving? How many people are going through hardship? I wonder where all their rescue mission money is going to. That is wicked. What wickedness, these people. So he's very powerful himself, uh, even more powerful than Benny Hinn. So these people, see, getting money, squeezing money off of poor people, that is pure wickedness. Okay, now I didn't know this, but this is kind of surprising to me. The other guy who's rich, which I had no idea, his name is Pat Robertson. So, Pat Robertson, he's actually famous among the liberal community. But I didn't know he was that rich. His net worth is $100 million. If you watch his TV shows, you'll notice at the end he'll like close his eyes and then picture somebody out there. Oh yeah, I see somebody who has like a half leg and if you touch that screen then your leg's gonna grow and then uh, sow the seed and then... so. He was actually, he always gives like at the end some kind of, uh, you know, closing eyed, weird voodoo stuff about begging people to give money and then also tr uh, where he's trying to get people to give money and claiming that he's healing the person. This is all just messed up weird stuff, messed up weird stuff, people. So he's part of the 700 Club. That's become very famous because it stood against the liberal community. But this is very dangerous because a lot of people who are upset against Obama and the liberals, who would they turn to for Christian ministers to stand up against those guys? Yeah, it won't turn to Bible believers. They're going to turn to Pat Robertson. They're going to turn to the TV preachers. And he's got more money than Benny Hinn. Charismatic. Charismatic, non-denominational, you got to watch out for. you got to watch out for those kind of people. Okay, so uh, let's look at some other people right here. So the next uh, wealthy pastor right here, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but Emmanuel Makandiwa. Emmanuel Makandiwa. He's a preacher from Zimbabwe. So he's from Zimbabwe. So he's number five. Now his net worth, this guy, is... A, is about $100 million as well. So him and Pat Robertson, they're like toe-to-toe. -to -toe. $100 million. It makes me upset. Uh, the majority of uh, millionaires, actually, I noticed, for pastors, a lot of them come from Africa. Uh, not just America, from Africa. It, may, it makes me extremely angry because the African people... Um, when you minister to them, a lot of them are very soft-hearted to the gospel. And then what happens is Satan wants to take advantage of that, where he would try to get them to go to the false kind of churches. They should be preached against. It's wicked. Yeah, it's wicked and it's uh, upsetting. He owns, obviously, a luxurious house. 
and he obviously has his own private jet as well. Another one is Ayo Oritse Jafor. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. I'm going to pronounce a lot of their names wrong. Not that they deserve it, amen. Okay, so he's located at Nigeria. His net worth is 120 million. His net worth is 120 million. Or it said Jafur. 120 million. And he's from Nigeria. Okay, uh, anyways, as we continue on right here, let's go to uh, number three. Number three. Number three, we all know him, and he's a good preacher too. Uh, yeah, T.D. Jakes, he is number three. You know what makes me upset is that he would preach against uh, or, you know, indicate condemnation, criticizing the preachers of L.A. because they're flaunting all their luxury. But this hypocrite right here, he's number three. He's, I bet you he's richer than all those preachers of L.A. combined, probably. His net worth is $150 million. Now, look how much this money is going to. Isn't this crazy? Where do they get this money? Where do they get this money from? This is insane. I mean, are there that many people around the world that actually give that much? That should be upsetting to you. That should be upsetting to you. And well, this is no surprise concerning T.D. Jakes. He said this one time in a Wall Street Journal article. He actually said this. With his multi-million religious, uh, multi-million dollar religious empire, he said, quote, mm, well, you know, before I quote this, what did Jesus uh, talk about in the Lord's Prayer? He mentioned, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen, right? Amen. T.D. Jake said, I am the power and the kingdom and the glory. And I think I kind of like it that way. This guy is something else, man. Something else right here. It is satanic. It is sent from hell. Uh, in the November 1998 People magazine, this is 1998, okay? People magazine. He, it describes about his 1.7 million dollar Dallas home, his blue BMW convertible, and then uh, he also drives a Mercedes, just a quote, and then uh, the Charleston Gazette, it focused on his $600,000 16-room Charlotte mansion with its own bowling alley and indoor swimming pool. Oh, okay. Yeah, you people online, sow the seed. You better press that donate button even harder now, I guess, you know? <laughs> Better press that donate button even harder now. I think I better start putting ads on my video so I can make more money now, you know? Now, the thing is this. You notice that you know, if you look at our website, we actually said that we don't believe in asking money. But the Lord incredibly blessed with sincere people, not preachers pulling the people out, but sincere people who wanted to genuinely help our ministry. And it's because of that, in this expensive Silicon Valley, San Francisco Bay Area, it's a miracle that we survived. Amen. It's a miracle. God's been so good to us. Amen. All right, then. So as much as uh, I'm kind of sick and tired of these guys, <laughs> here's another one. And he's from Nigeria. What a surprise. What a surprise. This should be upsetting. This should be upsetting. Uh, if, if any of you people supported these pastors... I, I urge you, don't support that anymore, please. It's just grieving to me. It's just making me upset. So I'll probably pronounce his name wrong. Oyed Depo. Oyed Depo. He's from Nigeria. His, his net worth is $150 million. $150 million. I'm... It's sickening, it's sickening, it's sickening. All right, a lot of people can guess this one, actually. A lot of people can guess this one, but I don't know if some of you people can guess. Do you know who's number one? <laughs> Kenneth Copeland. Oh, oh, 
Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. Do you know how much his net worth is? I don't know if this is accurate. But I can believe it because he keeps begging. $760 million. That's almost a billionaire. What? $760 million, this guy. You know why? He begs a lot. This guy begs a lot. He always keeps talking about sowing seed. You know what's extremely upsetting to me about Kenneth Copeland? What's extremely upsetting about, me, about Kenneth Copeland is that a liberal co comedy show like John Oliver had to expose Kenneth Copeland, and that was one of the most viewed videos from John Oliver's channel. One of his most viewed videos was concerning these heretical preachers to bash Christianity and shame our testimony. And he picked on Kenneth Copeland. He had to pick the worst of the lot. And with Kenneth Copeland, what John Oliver did was that showed a case of a woman who was suffering cancer, and she had to have faith that she would get healed, but she never got healed. She still hospitalized with cancer, and she kept giving money and spent all of her money to Kenneth Copeland's ministry. And the daughter was grieving you could tell she was grieving and she was so upset against christian churches and pastors and then she she complained and reported to the news about what kenneth copeland did to damage her mother's life wow. and then john oliver said that's just sickening and then he used his cuss word language and all that and shamed christians you see why the world does not want to follow christianity because of idiots like him this is what he said Jesus went into hell to free mankind from the penalty of Adam's treason. Oh, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> Jesus went to hell. When his blood poured out, it did not atone. Whoa. That's why he had to go to hell. I wonder if there's an independent fundamental Baptist pastor out there who's anti-Semite and post-trib that teaches that kind of same heretical nonsense that Jesus fried in hell mm. and salvation is not complete without it. Mm. You see why people look down on Christianity? Mm. Because not, not only charismatic, non-denominational, but even so-called KJV independent fundamental Baptist pastors. That's what the world wants. They want KJV only pastors, independent fundamental Bible believers to be lined up with those kind of clowns. Mm. Because there are some idiotic KJV only IFB pastors who have the audacity to talk garbage like this. This is just pure wickedness. Do you, uh, so here's, this is just, this is just disgusting. Okay, so he also said this too. He also talked about, he was immediately cut off from his fellowship with the Father and the light of God's light and glory within him was snuffed out. For Jesus to become our substitute, he had to go through uh, the same kind of separations. The scriptures verify it again and again. They tell us that he descended into the deep before he was brought up from the dead. And that his soul was not left in hell, neither, did his, neither his flesh did see corruption. Not only did Jesus go to hell, he sank to the deepest, darkest, part of it, to suffer everything that was necessary on our behalf. We'll be forever glad he did too, because he had not gone, because had he not gone to hell, we would have to. Here's another quote. For three days he suffered everything there is to suffer. Some people don't want to believe that. They want to believe that after his death, Jesus just stayed in the upper region of Sheol that the Bible calls paradise, but they're mistaken. I wonder what anti-dispensationalist, so-called KJV pastor, agrees with that kind of heresy. See, what, do they, what does he share with Kenneth Copeland? Anti-dispensationalism. Jesus, he, you know where he went to? He went to Abraham's bosom, paradise. That's the part, department of hell that Jesus went to. What did he do in hell? Fry? No, read at the book of Peter. He preached to the lost souls of hell. How can you preach to the lost souls of hell when you're screaming, ah, in hell? It's just blasphemy. It's a joke. 
If he had simply stayed there, there would have been no price paid for sin if he stayed at Abraham's bosom paradise. Okay, I hope that you're disgusted as much as I am. And people don't, and people are upset as I am too. I hope people understand that. There should be a righteous indignation against this, and they deserve all the sarcasm, criticism. A lot of people will get upset at me for pointing that out, but no, I do not apologize for that. That is just disgusting. That is just pure, sheer wickedness. I don't hesitate to do that. Didn't Elijah criticize the prophets of Baal? Where did your God go? He must have gone on a long journey. You know? <laughs> what did Jesus Christ say? You strain at a gnat and you swallow a camel. You make someone else a twofold more a child of hell than yourselves. Look, I don't hesitate to do this. This is just pure, sheer wickedness. All right, for some people who are curious about uh, the other big shots that I did not mention, so you can guess, uh, I did not mention them because I already, we'll call them honorary mentions. <laughs> Honor the honorary mentions, Joel Osteen, net worth $40 million. And then let's cover uh, the other pastors right here. Billy Graham, who's been deceased, net worth $25 million. I didn't know he was that rich. Rick Warren, net worth $25 million. T.B. Joshua, he's becoming famous too. Uh, his church, you can guess where it is, Nigeria. Now this is making, how many millionaires are in Nigeria? Yeah. This is making me extremely upset and angry right here. His net worth, $15 million. Oh my goodness. So, what did the Bible talk about these people? They Lust of the flesh, they want to get a reward from you. They want to get money off of you. That's not how it works, folks. That's not how it works. This is pure, sheer wickedness. Jude already warned you about this in the last days. Are you one of those churches that's falling into apostasy and falling into that in the last days? I pray not.